If you keep your cat always indoors, then once a year you grab your cat, you shove it in a carrier to take them to the bed where they can smell dogs, other cats, and meet someone on a blue coat that starts manipulating them without any permission, I can assure you that your cat is not going to like leaving your home by any circumstance. Not even if you're taking them to Disneyland. Cats can get really anxious when riding on a car. They will meow the whole time and some might even urinate themselves. It becomes kind of a tragic event that will just lead to more anxiety and frustration for future trips. When Mia came to my life in August 2020, I was dating Jasmine a super smart woman that did not like cats all that much. We had a two weeks road trip planned for that same summer and Mia was only 12 weeks old. Canceling the road trip because of a cat would have broken the relationship and not taking Mia with me would imply that almost one fourth of Mia's life at the time would have been spent with someone that was not me which is not ideal for bonding. Yes, I am going to talk about how we dealt with the pee and the poo during the road trip but first things first. I had three weeks to get my cat ready for a 3,000 mile road trip through Utah, Arizona and New Mexico. To get to Arizona, we had to take a plane. So the first thing that I did was getting Mia used to the carrier. With some clicker training, you can even get your cat inside the carrier on command, which also comes extremely handy when you're driving alone on a highway or places where being 100% on the road is critical. The best way to get your cat inside the carrier is using finger targeting. If you don't know what finger targeting is, take a look at this video where I explain step by step what is finger targeting and how to teach it to your cat. And despite there's no real need to teach your cat to enter the carrier on command, it is advisable at least to get them familiarized with it and add some catnip, toys or food inside so that they want to enter inside the carrier on their own. By doing that, your cat is going to get familiarized with the carrier, it's going to impregnate it with their own scent and it's going to create this positive association between the carrier and all those good things that happen inside it. In the allegory of the cave, Plato describes a group of people that have been living facing a wall inside a cave all their life. These people could see nothing but shadows in the world that was in front of them, created by people passing by between a fire and themselves. Plateau defends that the shadows have become the reality for these people because they have never seen anything else. They have no ability to understand that what they are seeing reflected on the wall are just the shadows of things that are happening behind them. The people, the noises and the smells inside your home become your cat's reality. The best thing we can do is incorporate unknown situations very early on so other people, other noises, other animals or even the car become part of your cat's new reality. Despite it's going to be easier to desensitize a kitty to getting used to riding on a car or being out and about, the steps to achieve it are the same for adult cats and for kittens. The best way to think about it is dividing the process in three stages. Getting your cat ready, getting your car ready, and ensuring a smooth ride. I will add timestamps in the description box down below so you can skip to a particular part of the video if you already know the rest. For the road trip, we were going to rent a camper van, so how the heck I was going to get a camper van ready for Mia? And to make things worse, by this time, Jasmine was already very pissed at me for not leaving Mia behind, but I was determined to make it work. Cats use pheromones to mark their territory. They rub themselves against objects to leave them impregnated with their odor. This is safe stand. There's a lot more to talk about pheromones, but we covered that in another video. You can click here if you're curious, but let's continue with our Arizona trip. In an ideal situation, you would do several trips to the car with your cat and let them roam around and impregnate everything with their scent. Also, by eating and playing inside the car, the cat would normalize the environment and we would start off of a way better position when going on the road trip. Because I could not get Mia inside the car before the road trip, I decided to impregnate as many towels as I could with her smell. The plan was easy. Take three or four towels and place them where usually Mia hangs out. She would just do normal life and impregnate all those towels with her smell. Then before the road trip, I would grab the towels and place them on the camper van. I was also going to take some catnip and place it on the floor and on the back seats of the car, but I could do that on my arrival. Getting my cat Mia ready was going to be a little bit more tedious. She had never been on a car before and I did not want to get her for the first time inside a car during a two week road trip. I started taking Mia for short walks inside the carrier within my apartment. I'd lure her inside the carrier and reward. Move the carrier, stop and reward. Lift the carrier, put the carrier down and reward. 
It's important to reward your cat once the carrier has stopped. The movement is the anticipation of a reward that's coming, a little bit like the marking that we do with a clicker. Also, rewarding your cat while you're moving them is going to make it hard for them to understand what exactly you're rewarding. Once I got Mia used to the carrier, I decided to take her on a short ride somewhere. I grabbed all the towels that I had previously impregnated with her smell and rented a car for half a day. She complained a little, but overall, she was fine. And you know what else could be fine? That you smash the like button if you're finding value in this video. The big day arrived. I was flying from New York to Arizona and after a short Uber ride, we would be road tripping across three states. Flying with a cat requires some of the same steps as riding by car, with the additional complexity of security checkpoints, luggage, crossing borders, or airports in general. I created a video talking about the steps that you need to follow if you're planning to fly with your cat. You can click here to check that video, but I'm also going to be adding the link in the description box down below. How do you make a trip enjoyable for a cat? Simple. It is the exact same thing for them as it is for us. Right temperature, a comfortable seat, keeping noises and sudden turns to a minimum. Also, the opportunity to stretch the leg every three, four hours, and of course, using the restroom when needed. Cats pee and poo are the number one concern of cat parents traveling with their cat for a reason. Despite there are some ready-to-go litter boxes that are made for traveling, the litter is a little dusty and Mia was not used to it. So the risk of using those was double. My cat Mia not identifying the litter and deciding to do her things elsewhere, and in the case that she decided to use it, the low quality litter would be tracing and dusting all around the car that we were supposed to ride for long hours, eat and sleep for two weeks. The option that worked best for us was to have a bunch of disposable foil trays, the ones that you can buy to use in the oven, and our preferred litter. The beauty about the disposable tray is that you don't have to clean it. And because it's made of aluminum foil every week, when we had to change the litter, we would just grab the foil and throw it away. There are fancier options made with cloth that have even a zipper on them. They are amazing for one day trips or if you're staying at hotels. But when you're going to be on the road for two weeks, you don't wanna be dealing with cleaning litter boxes. We put some litter inside the foils and put those trays on the floor on the back seat. As soon as Mia would use it, we would clean the tray to prevent others from staying inside the car. We would put it inside the back and then and that back inside another bag. And then that back inside another bag. And then that back inside another bag. And then that back inside another bag. And as soon as we had a chance, we would dump it. If your cat is leash trained or you have the ability to train your cat to walk on a leash, I would totally recommend it. It makes a lot of sense to let your cat roam around whenever you make a stop. It's going to help them unwind from the trip as well as getting them a little tired and increasing the chances that they're going to sleep during the next portion of the ride. Cat food. This is an interesting one. Mia is in a raw diet, which implies refrigeration. Because we were riding on a camper van, we had a freezer. For shorter rides, I use an isothermal bag. If you're going on a long trip, an electric fridge is advised. The alternative is to get your cat used to dry food before the trip. Transitioning back to kibble has to be done slowly to prevent upsetting our cat's stomach, but that's a topic for another day. Also, don't forget to carry those minor things that can make your life way easier if things get messy for whatever reason. Paper towels, wet wipes, plastic bags, and hand sanitizer. Some cats will hate the carrier. If that's the case of your cat, I would recommend you to have them on a harness and attach them either to the seat belt or have someone carrying them on their lap. Make sure to check the local regulation. I don't want you doing anything illegal. Cats will need to release some energy during the trip, either by playing with them or walking them on a leash. But having an hyper cat when you're on a road trip, it's not a good idea. Because I work from home, I had to teach my cat to play on command. It's super helpful because it allows you to play with your cat whenever you have the time and not when their mood and instructions force you to. You can find more about it in this video here. Oh, and by the way, Jasmine and I broke before we even got to Utah. We did not even finish the trip together. So the moral of the story is, yes, you can go on a road trip with your cat. No, don't even try it. Don't date a person that doesn't like cats. Stay well, stay safe, see you outdoors.